When the LHC was um, being built, so this was in the early 2000s, uh, much of the work was now with industry to build these enormous detectors. Um, and so the physicists had to turn their attention to how were we going to analyze all this data that was going to uh, be produced. In the late 1990s, there was this concept knocking around called grid computing, which is effectively joining up lots of rather cheap computers in a worldwide grid so that they all work together in, in harmony. We got involved in that in the UK in late 1999, and we got a project started funding in about 2001. Uh, which is still running today and which is led from the University of Glasgow. Um, and this was the Grid for Particle Physics, the Grid PP project, which uh, I currently lead. The amount of data that um, comes off the experiments is absolutely huge, and that data is then uh, processed into a form that physicists can actually analyze, and it's shipped out worldwide. What this means is the physicist doesn't have to have a computing accounts on all these computers worldwide. There is a whole trust system set up which does that and that's a huge achievement to achieve on a global scale across 170 different institutes. The physicist doesn't know where the data is stored, the physicist doesn't know where the data was uh, actually processed, the physicist is just presented back with the result. Our infrastructure is this clever magic behind the scenes which um, effectively does all that. So what GridPP does is to provide that infrastructure in the UK. It's 10% of a global infrastructure. But the infrastructure is extensive, but it's not particularly high tech. Uh, it's just what we do with it, which is high tech. We have very ordinary uh, Cormex 86 boxes, Intel processors, some AMD processors. We have storage, which is the sort of thing anybody could buy. But the infrastructure we have at Glasgow is we have uh, 6,000 computers. We have Oh, six petabytes of storage, uh, a lot of networking switches. Our approach here was to build an infrastructure which is inherently unreliable. We have 170 sites and at any moment some site can disappear. We have to produce an infrastructure which is fault tolerant. So if one site goes down, it's not the end of the world. Some other site will pick up that slack and we always make sure that we can reproduce the data. Uh, if data is lost at one site, there's always a second copy somewhere that can be recovered. We're approaching what's called run three. Now, we understand the data levels for run three, and we know that with uh, careful evolution of our infrastructure, we can handle the amount of data that is going to come out of run three. The big problem we have is beyond that, what is called run four. Run four is will be after a long another long shutdown after run three, so we're talking about 2026, 2027 time period, and we know that for the amount of data we expect, then we can't just evolve our infrastructure. So we have to navigate this path to how do we actually handle uh, the quantity of data that we expect in five or six years' time.